So we have a packed program. We're going to uh, share with you experiences from the students who went in December with us. I'm Sarah Spear, and I'm one of the ones that accompanied the group and had the privilege of being with them. We were hosted by Shanghai Ocean University, which is actually called Shanghai Fish Shanghai Fisheries University, about an hour outside of the actual city of Shanghai. So it wasn't like we were right downtown. Um, and you, we had 12 students, 10 of who are able to present tonight. The other two had commitments, they couldn't be here. But I'd like to recognize in the beginning, we also had additional faculty staff with us on the trip. So I'd like to uh, recognize Ms. Alwyn Young, if y'all would stand up, Alwyn. And Alwyn was our translator because she's bilingual. And she was wonderful to have, especially because of food. We, we never knew exactly what we were ordering. And she helped a lot with helping us uh, know what we were eating or how to ask what we wanted, or uh, et cetera. But it was great to have her there. And then Dr. Philip Smedra accompanied us. Dr. Smedra. And Chief, Chief Tracy, our public safety officer, who will be speaking to you later. And Patricia, Ms. Patricia Hunter, who teaches in the ELI. She also couldn't make it tonight, but it's great to have her along. So we'll, we'll start. We'll have uh, each person is going to come up and do a short focus uh, topic of the trip because there were a lot of pieces to it. And then uh, once we get through everybody, you're welcome to ask questions, but I think we'll hold on questions until the end so that everybody gets a chance to, to speak. So we'll start with Ms. Ariana Harvey. Good evening, everyone. As Ms. Dr. Spear said, my name is Ariana Carvey. I'm a junior here at GSW and I'm majoring in information technology. I decided to attend this trip because I love traveling and I've always wanted to go to Asia and so I got to do that and I'm very glad. <clears throat> My presentation is called University Life, China versus USA. <clears throat> One of the topics I want to talk about are the class schedules. <clears throat> At Shanghai Ocean, the students get up as early as 6 o'clock in the morning, and they're in class from 8 a.m. until the evening hours, while in the U.S., we're accustomed to being in class for only an hour and 15 minutes. And also, at Shanghai Ocean, the students are in class for hours at a time with breaks in between, whereas we're accustomed to creating our own schedules around our various activities and responsibilities. Pictured is the classroom that we actually took classes in at Shanghai Ocean. In the dining facilities, the Chinese students have to use chopsticks, which is obviously a big difference from the United States since we're accustomed to using forks and knives. They didn't have those there. And at Shanghai Ocean, they also have more options for their eatery. Students can walk off campus to nearby restaurants and grocers. And here in America, students in college tend to have meal plans rather than eating off campus. As far as transportation goes, public transportation does not exist here. Whereas in China, it's actually very popular. People walk around to get to class, and as I said before, nearby grocers and shops. The students also, what's going on here? The students also take the bus to get around, and biking is also an option. 
Residents' life is also quite different in China versus here in the United States. The students have as many as three roommates, while most of us here are accustomed to having only one. The males and females are kept separate, so as not to encourage students to fraternize. And commuting isn't really an option in China as it is over here. So that's another big difference. And picture is the gorgeous Shanghai Ocean Campus. The rules and regulations are also very different here compared with China. As I said before, males and females are not encouraged to socialize amongst each other. Opposite sex guests are just very discouraged. In addition, Shanghai Ocean enforces a policy in which the electricity is cut off at 11 p.m. So therefore, staying up all night cramming to write an essay at the last minute would not be an option for the Chinese students. Changing majors is very difficult in China compared with here in America. It's a very difficult process for them. They have to take and pass a test in order to change their major if they wish to do so. Whereas here in the US, students can easily change majors if they so choose, and many students often do so multiple times. The number of international students is very different here compared with China. There are nearly three quarters of a million here in America working towards their undergraduate degrees. Whereas at Shanghai Ocean University, there were under 50 international students. However, we did get to meet a few from countries like Mongolia, Senegal, and Japan. Some of the student activities include ping pong and taekwondo. We actually were privileged enough to get to witness a taekwondo performance while at the university. The students are very talented. This is a picture of some of the attendees learning Tai Chi. We also learned Chinese yoga. I really enjoyed that. I was actually able to do a lot of the moves, so that was a lot of fun. Here in America, most young people are glued to their smartphones nowadays, and they love to use social media such as Facebook and Twitter. However, these platforms are not available in China. They instead use a popular app called QQ, Google is also blocked, and their replacement site of sorts is called Baidu. These are a few of the other aspects of American culture that I was able to witness while in China. They actually have fast food restaurants such as McDonald's, Pizza Hut, and KFC. And they also had a Forever 21, which is one of my favorite stores. So I was happy to see that. And finally, I just want to leave you all with a message that I think it can be a very interesting learning experience getting to know students from other countries. All you have to do is just approach someone, introduce yourself, and you never know what you may discover that you have in common with people who are not from the same place as you. And I think it would be a great idea if you all could take that opportunity to broaden your horizons and try to get to know other people instead of just people who are just like you, basically.
Good job, Ariana. My name is Raleigh Hancock. I'm a senior exercise science major, and I'm also minoring in marketing. Um, the reason why I wanted to attend on the Shaw University trip was because last year, me and Courtney Harmon and some of the other interns actually gave a tour to 30 Chinese students that came to GSW. And we also were thinking what it would be like to be in their shoes to go to a different culture and be able to experience the day-to-day -day activities that they um, take part in. In the first class is calligraphy, is the art of writing. Um, the penmanship is actually what wins over the women in China. The instructor right here that's in the picture practices two hours a day just on his penmanship. And the calligraphy has changed throughout history. There's many different symbols that have changed throughout the time. And the next, uh, there, here's a video of someone performing. And I also have some examples for y'all to see. The next class that we took was paper cutting. Paper cutting is a very elaborate and fancy if you ask me. It, as you can tell on the picture to the left, it's very detailed and it takes very precise and precise hands and timing. And this is us in the class performing. And then we also were able to do Tai Chi. This was developed in China. There's actually 24 posture simplified moves, and that's actually those two um, papers right there. And each move is named after a different animal. It takes many years to master, and is based off the yin and yang principle, and also is used as yoga to suit the mind, body, and the spirit. And then there are the steps. And then the next class was Kung Fu. Um, we got to actually sit in on the club performing. And here's a video for y'all. And 
also were able to watch them perform routines with nunchucks and other um, weapons. And then the main class that we sat through was our language class, was speaking Mandarin. Well, that's the official language of the Chinese. And some of the key terms that we learned were Ni Hao, which stands for Hey, Ni Hao, Ni Hao Ma, which stands for Hey, How Are You, and Shi Shi, which means Thank You. Nancy. I'm a sophomore at GSW and I'm a history major. My topic is Buddhism in Shanghai, Lions, Dragons, and Cranes, oh my. Okay. The ideas of Buddhism. Buddhism teaches moderation in all things, which is why it's considered the middle path. Of about 308 million Buddhists in the world, 102 million of those are in China alone. My Heian of Buddhism was brought over from India and teaches the compassion and meditation. So the temple that we went to um, had a lot of people meditating. Um, they believe in bodhisattvas, people who help other people reach nirvana. Not the band, but the final heaven for Buddhists. Um, they also incorporate local deities, like these for good crops. Um, and people pray on the little red chairs in the front. And those were some Buddhists um, taking pictures. They were on a pilgrimage there, so they had their iPads and iPhones out. So that's kind of neat. We went to Jing'en Temple, which translates to the Temple of Peace and Tranquility. It's over 780 years old and was built in the Three Kingdoms era. Since then, it has been moved several times, burned down in 1972, and has been renovated most recently in 2010. It's kind of odd getting there because it's in the middle of a huge metropolitan area with a mall with Christmas decorations on one side and an old navy on the other. You can see in the background all the tall buildings. It's surrounded by tall buildings. It had many different statues there. Um, the Jing'an Silver Buddha, seen in the middle there, is the largest statue in the temple. The room it is in is supported by 46 columns and made entirely out of wood. There's also a library underneath with Buddha sutras, um, which are made mostly of stone, so that's really cool. The statue on your right is the largest jade statue in China and weighs in at 11 tons. Um, there are also many offerings given to different Buddhas, like those of apples near the feet of the laughing Buddha. Over there. Right there, there's an apple, and there's another apple. So people will just put food right in front of them, which is kind of cool. And they'll also give offerings to them, so they'll put money in jars in front of them. There are three main animals seen frequently in Chinese and Buddhist culture. The lion is one of them. Lions are known as the king of the forest. They're supposed to protect people from evil, which is why their spirits guard many entrances. Um, they also show power and grandeur, so they show up in anything, from in front of temples to in front of hotels and restaurants. Dragons is the second main symbol that shows up in China. It's used by emperors to represent supreme authority. Imperial dragons are kind of neat because they have five claws instead of four, so that's how you know they're special. Um, they're often seen with the phoenix because it's the female equivalent to the dragon. Um, in Shanghai, there's a pillar that supports an elevated highway in Shanghai known as the Nine Dragon Pillar. The ground seemed impossible to dig there, so a Buddhist priest said that there was a dragon lair underneath and that the government had to honor it. So they built the pillar with nine dragons because Jio, which is nine in Chinese, stands for long lasting. Birds are a, an essential part of Buddhism. There's a story about Siddhartha Gautama, the original Buddha, and his cousin having a dispute over a swan. The cousin shot it with an arrow, and um, Siddhartha healed its wing that was pierced by an arrow. It was decided by an elder that the bird belongs to those who protect it, not those who took its life away. So birds are a big part of Buddhism um, and in China. Um, cranes in China represent longevity, and you can see them everywhere. Like um, on the little thing right there, you can't really see, but they are everywhere in every corner of that piece of art. And um, peacocks are used to transmute poison, and roosters represent desire because they're attached to their mate. 
Spending time in Shanghai, I was introduced to a whole new world of Buddhism and symbolism. Next time you are in Shanghai, spend time looking for those lions, dragons, and cranes. Oh my. Thank you. Ni hao, everyone. I'm Valerie Wen, and I'm a senior accounting student here at GSW, graduating in May. I went to Shanghai because I love to explore and travel the world and to experience a different culture. This is also my second time going study abroad with GSW, and in spring break, I'm going to Nicaragua. Um, as you know, Shanghai, we went to, to Shanghai during Christmas. So we got to experience some of the traditions of the holiday. These are some of the major holidays in China that they also celebrate. Um, you may recognize two of them, like New Year's and Chinese New Year's. Chinese New Year's is about like the lunar eclipse or the lunar calendar, which changes up every year. Like this year it was February 19th, and next year it will be February 9th. And each year um, it's represented by a different animal. This year it was represented by the sheep. And it's also many people's favorite because it's cute and cuddly. And Chinese New Year's is also called the Spring Festival because it welcomes the new spring season, flowers, and new growth. Students in Shanghai usually get around a week or two off school, and it's considered their winter break. During the time of celebration, family and friends will exchange red envelopes of money and will set off fireworks and firecrackers and enjoy a plate of traditional dumplings to bring in the new year. Red in China means good luck, and it's supposed to ward off the evil spirits. Now let's talk about Christmas. These are some of the differences and similarities between the U.S. and China. Um, in the U.S., Christmas is a public holiday, so we get school off, the post office is closed, and a lot of businesses are closed also. We get to spend time with family, enjoy the season of giving, and to also be selfless. In China, it's not a public holiday, so no schools are off, and if you work, you have to work. But the younger generation, like our age, celebrate Christmas and exchange gifts. One of the many gifts that people will receive are apples. The, ap the reason this way, because apples have the same pronunciation as the word peace in Chinese. So they give them as a, as a sign of peace. Even though it's not a well celebrated throughout the country, the holidays help the economy generously because Shanghai people love the sales and discount and there's everything is on sale and discount there. This is some of the things, just Christmas tree, gingerbread house. And this is one of the main roads that we went, called Najing Road, it's pedestrian zone which means no cars are allowed. And here you can get a lot of shopping done, like, but it's more of Americanized shopping, such as stores like the Apple Store, Forever 21, Gap, Nike, Old Navy, even an m and &M store. Here's another view. This is from the temple that Kate was talking about. And as you can see, this, there is no real Christmas trees there. They're all fake. And this was at near the city God Temple where there are more tourists shopping and it's super crowded. Like they push the boundaries of personal space to where there's none. <laughs> and, but the shopping there probably was the funnest I have to say because as a business student, I appreciate the aggressive marketing and management in this area because they didn't go after me, they went over them. <laughs> um, and my advice as a senior student is if you get a chance to go somewhere, just go and enjoy. Okay, 
So I got to um, talk about the Shanghai East High School. But first, I'm Samantha Price, and I'm a junior, and I'm an HR management major. And um, the reason why I went to China is because I don't like to travel. So I've never been a traveler. I don't really have homebody. Do not take me out of the state of Georgia type thing. But then I was convinced that it's only two weeks, and it's for a pretty good prize as a student. So why don't you know, try it out, and you'll be home in time for Christmas. So I went. Um, so on December 16th, about uh, 10 days into our trip, we got to go visit the high school. And this is a picture of the school. Um, it was real interesting because it's a boarding school, so the students actually live there. And you're approached by a gatekeeper. So usually at uh, little boarding schools and stuff, there's like a little gate that you drive through. No, when you walk in, you're like, there's guards. So nobody, none of the students can get in and get out without going past these guys. Um, and when we first walked into the building, there were just different uh, art displays of what the students had done. It was a little, I think they had like an art show going on at the time, and it was to help welcome us. And these are some things that they've done. Um, a lot of them are uh, pictures, and then the boat is actually put together with cardboard, and then that's a drawing, and some of them are paintings. And then uh, that was a photograph that they had taken. And so it's just to display some of the student artwork. So then we walked into the auditorium and we were greeted by a lot of students just like these that were just sitting there. And then once we walked through the door, they kind of stood up and clapped their hands as if we were some kind of rock star that had just walked through the building. It was actually pretty cool. And so they were like clapping and cheering for a good five minutes until we finally like sat down. And then they continued to clap. Um, so this was our friendly exchange that we had with them. And while it's not a high school, we kind of think high school is 9th or 12th grade. No, there's are like little baby kids. So we're talking maybe 6th, 7th grade and on up. And they live there. They don't go home. They don't go home on the weekends. Some of them do, but like most of them don't. Unless they do have their little break that I was talking about. And so we, we got there. They wanted to do a little talent show for us. And so um, one of them did interpretive dancing for us. There was another group that uh, we played a comical edition of Sleeping Beauty, and it was actually pretty comical. And then we had these boys singing. That's a video. Yes, ma'am. Uh, oh, wait. OK, here we go. So um, you see Alexis standing there. We also got to um, talk to the students while we were in there. So Dr. Smedra had opened us up and kind of introduced who we were and why we were there and what we were doing. And then um, Raleigh and I got to get up and talk to them about what school we go to, what our school's like, and how it's a little bit different from theirs. And then they would just ask us random questions. So like they asked us, they asked Alexis about uh, their relationships and love lives. So that was interesting. And then they talked to us like, what do we do for fun and all that cool stuff. Um, and we also were uh, graced with a big bouquet of flowers that we all took pictures with. And um, then from there, we got to go to their little coffee room. And basically, you walk in, and it's a cool little big conference table, as you see. And then like 
little couches with tables and then a cute little plate of tomatoes, great tomatoes with bananas and oranges and coffee. And it was awesome because they just thought that we were celebrities, so they fed us like celebrities. So it was really fun. Okay. <laughs> and then we got to go to an English class. And so um, in their English class, this is their professor, and he's really not much older than we are. So like sort of kind of new, fresh out of college. And that day they were talking about um, congratulations, compliments, and uh, sympathy. And so we got to watch them do role playing and define what these are. And uh, the teacher would give an example, and he'd be like, oh, well, name this. And then they got to get in their groups. And so um, this guy right here, um, he was Courtney's friend. And um, he actually came to America about two weeks after us to come and visit. We're not really quite sure where, because we didn't get to talk to them for long. But he was actually coming, and he was pretty excited to see the, who we were and to kind of sort of know what he was expecting. And then this was one of my group partners. And so we just kind of jumped on into class and started learning with them. We would ask them a few things about China, and then they asked us stuff about America, and we'd help them learn about their congratulations, compliments, and things. <coughs> we also got to attend a music class. Um, maybe you guys have seen these before, I really have not. But they're really cool pianos, but the noise doesn't come out unless you like blow the whistle. So it was really cool to watch them play. And um, then we got to look at their little music book, and this was probably one of the cutest little boys in there. And then after, um, at the end of the day, they, like, high school musicals started playing on the intercom. And we were like, okay, what's going on? And all the kids get up and they start doing their little stretching routine. Coolest thing I've ever seen little kids do. Um, and so this is a video of them in their music class. And this is the first day that they ever got the music. And so they were learning how to play, so it's a bit rough. and then you have the pianos and some of them have drums and things and stuff. So it's pretty cool to watch them learn. And then of course you have Professor Young over there keeping the beat with the kids. So it's really fun to watch her. So. Oh. And then we were, we got to, uh, we, did, we did, I didn't have any of the pictures to put up here, but we did get to go look at the living situation and like how they live. So take our shared rooms in oats and kind of like push it together in, in words and have beds, four beds in a room. And their mattresses are literally this thick and they're all wooden frames. Yeah, they don't look comfortable. So we really got to bless here. Um, and then they each have, well, I say they each have their own bathroom and shower, but it's one per four people. So that was the other interesting thing. And then we just got to walk around campus. It was freezing, those four kids. They did all get to wear the same kind of uniforms and uh, sweatpants and sweatshirts, so that was exciting. But other than that, we just enjoyed our day there. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you. Hello, my name is Hughes Pope. I am a freshman here at Georgia Southwestern, studying as an English major. Um, one thing that's always been an interest of mine is music and parties, but mostly music. And well, China has a good bit of both. Um, although we went to class to learn about Chinese language, culture, and history, we had the night kind of all to ourselves, which I, for one, took advantage of to do a little field research on my own. Um, you see, the music and concert scene in Shanghai Ocean University campus was huge. And every night for the first week, I would go out and I would explore the scene. What I found actually really caught me off guard. Uh, the first place I went to was a small venue with this red velvet door. I went inside expecting to hear some popular Chinese music, 
but what I actually heard was a little bit too familiar for my tastes. Uh, anyone here know Kesha? Yeah. Yeah. Um, another time, I stopped by an outdoor concert on my way into town to hear none other than Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses. After repeating this a few times and uh, talking with a few English-speaking locals, I found that Western pop music is actually kind of the big thing over in China. But obviously, I knew there had to be some kind of underground scene as well. So, I continued going to different venues, trying to find out more about that underground scene. Uh, finally, I spoke with this English-speaking bartender and asked her to play some of China's local popular music. Uh, so, getting off track, uh, who here listens to 90s alternative rock? Come on, raise hands. All right, we got some over there. Okay, you got some. Um, well, when I heard what she played, uh, that was actually the first thing that came to mind. Um, I recorded it, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get the recording in in time to download. But what it actually sounded like, a couple artists that I know you can actually relate it to, is stuff like Toad the Wet Sprocket or um, Jack Johnson. For one, there's a huge Jack Johnson kind of influence almost in there. Uh, Acoustic guitars a lot of the times with a more rock drum beat. It was really interesting to hear and relate it to stuff that was already made in America. And one thing that I've always believed is that music can reflect a culture. And appropriately, uh, the culture over in China was very similar to 90s America, which was an awesome thing for me to... I, Love 90s. But all in all, this trip was life changing. If you ever get the chance to go on anything like this, I implore you take it. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trade this experience for the world. <clears throat> Thank you. My name is Courtney Harmon. I'm a senior psychology major and my minor is in human resource management. And I wanted to be a part of the Chinese language and culture program to broaden my horizons and also to have an understanding of what international students experience when they are here with us. So, I'm gonna talk about when we visited the Shanghai Community Center. And it was an eye-opening experience that greatly depicted the cultural differences from the Chinese culture and also the American culture. While we were there, we saw how the Chinese people had an upbeat and high pace and a very interactive livelihood throughout their lifespan. They were very open to our questions and also to interact with us. And they really wanted to engage with the American students to see how our, our culture was constructed as well. And as we arrived, we were welcomed with dancing, singing, and roller skating. And also they were um, participating in Chinese. So it was one of the initial activities and we quickly figured out it was a lot more difficult than it seems. It's really a balancing act from moving your arms up and down to keep the yo-yo from flying off. So this is just another symbol of yin and yang in their culture because you have to balance it so it doesn't fly away. And here is actually a video of one of the um, people from the community center actually doing it for us. And as you can see, it's just a balancing act of keeping it going, even though the video kind of quit early. So the next thing that we got to do, um, we um, participated in calligraphy in the Chinese chess. 
And as we enter the community center, you can just feel the energy from all the people. And you can see how they thrive from participating in calligraphy and also playing Chinese chess. And as you see, we um, also had the opportunity to actually practice the art of calligraphy while we were there and also play Chinese chess and learn how it is similar to the chess that we play here. A main activity throughout China is ping pong, and the community center, of course, was no different. The skill of the elderly Chinese people was amazing, and it shows just how important ping pong is at every age. It is an activity that, regardless of your age, it keeps you active and engaged. The next is the art of Chinese paper cutting. And this was displayed at the community center, and you can tell the amount of practice that the ladies had in order to master some of the art. And as you see on this side right here, it's just very intricate and it's very difficult to get the little slices where you need them to go. And we were excited when we just made a star compared to their intricate different animals that they made. <laughs> the next. And this was my favorite part of the visit to the community center and it was the dancing activity. The dances showed the importance of the culture in China, and it was a great workout. It was actually very difficult to what we had to, than what we expected. But the ladies were very open to teaching us the different dances and practicing with us until we kind of got it. And there's a video for you. We were very excited when they said that we were actually going to get to practice the dance because I know, as you see, Alexis and Sam and I, we were, you know, wanting to do that. Okay. Also, um, while we were there, we saw that they have different forms of relaxation methods. They actually had a room for just foot massages. So they balanced the activity and staying upbeat along with, you know, re relaxation and keeping it going. And visiting the community center showed that the Chinese culture is characterized by longevity, togetherness, and open to other cultures. So I would definitely suggest that no matter if you're a little scared about going to a different country as I was, that is a great opportunity to open your eyes and to just see how different cultures will change the way that you see the world. Thank you. Um, one of the differences that I noticed was the audience, 
Um, they're so like interactive over there. Um, he, like when we came to the show, they give you like a lot of noise makers and balloons and things. And everybody like the whole time while somebody is performing, they're just like clapping and making noises with the stuff. But they're so like just excited to see anybody who's on the stage. And also while somebody's performing, they really like their performance. Um, before, like at the end of the person's performance, they would just run out. Like somebody just run out the side of the stage and it just give them a gift. Like they'd give them a, a flower or a balloon to show that they um, really like their performance. Um, and then um, one of the last days we were there, they, it was a Christmas party and it was for all the international students there. And I really had fun at the Christmas party because it was just really different to me than the Christmas party I've been to here because it was just like a, it was like a program kind of, but everybody um, got up and they did different acts from their country um, to sort of honor him. Uh, she's Mongolian and she did a traditional Mongolian dance for us and that was really beautiful. And the girls on this side at the top, they're from South Korea, and they did like a Korean pop dance for us and a song. And then um, I sung, and um, she played the guitar for me, and I sung Silent Night to show them um, kind of traditional songs that we sing at Christmas. And all of us got up and we sung We Should Merry Christmas. And I think we went up there in those right here to show them how we celebrate Christmas. And at the end, they did a fashion show, which I thought was really cool because you got to see um, everybody's traditional garments from their country, and it was just really beautiful. And that's our teacher, Ty Lee in the white, and the girl in the red. Um, that was one of our teacher's sisters named Jennifer. And the party was just really fun, and everybody would walk in, they gave like glowing um, headbands or like bows and like bunny ears, and like everybody was just dressed up, and it was really fun. Okay, so while we were at the talent show and um, the Christmas party and just different places around China, I got to experience a lot of social etiquette. Um, the social etiquette there in China is really different. Um, they really don't have a personal space. Like, we have personal goals. There is no personal goal over there. You just get right in there. Very close to the face. It doesn't matter. And um, also, I, I mean, I think they're because it's so um, heavily populated. But like no matter uh, people are there, people just bump into you, they just push to you, and everybody just keep walking. It's no sorry or anything. And one of my uh, friends that I met over there, they told me that you um, the reason why because they don't say sorry to strangers. Like if you accidentally bump into somebody, if you knock something out somebody's hand, you don't say sorry because you don't know them. You just say sorry to people who are your friends and family, like people that you know, but you don't say. Sorry to strangers, which I thought was interesting, so. But overall, I really enjoyed my trip, and I was really excited to go, because that's my first time um, ever going out of the country. And it was definitely an experience, and I just hope that all y'all get to go one day. Thank you. My name is Megan Pierce. I am a junior English professional writing major here, and I wanted to go on this trip to not only feel a sense of wanderlust that I have, but also to get to experience the different cultures, and I did. We actually got to go to a different university at one point. Um, we went to Changshu Institute of Technology. Uh, disclaimer, all of my pictures are borrowed from Samantha and Courtney, so they're all of them. Here we go. Okay, so as soon as we got to Changshu, they took us to a kitchen with their chef and decided that they were going to teach us how to make dumplings. So here's their chef, right there talking about making dumplings and he has his little station set up to um, demonstrate for us. And this is what we were given at every little table. We had the meat and I'm not really sure what all was in it, and little rolling pins and bread dough. And then 
here he is demonstrating how to do it. And so you roll the bread up into this long, thin line, or the dough, into this long, thin line. You cut it up into little pieces and pat it out to where it's just a little circle. And then you take these big chopsticks and put the meat inside it. And then I'll show you in just a minute what it looks like at the end. So here are some people, Courtney and Raleigh and them, doing, making the dumplings. So this is what they're supposed to look like at the end. Those are the ones that he made because they look very, very nice and neat. And then here he is. This is how um, they steam them. They have the little wooden bowls and you see those <laughs> everywhere. And you just steam them in those. And then here is the finished product. We actually got to eat all the ones that we made. So then after that, they paired us up with people who were majoring in similar things that we were majoring in. So I was paired up with an English major, but she's majoring in teaching English to um, Chinese students. And then if you're a business major, you got paired with business majors over there and we toured their campus while the professors and faculty were eating with other faculty members there. So here's Samantha, one of her friends, while we were doing calligraphy. Calligraphy is a really big part, and I know that I'm not the first person <laughs> to mention this, but everywhere that we went in China, we learned calligraphy. It was just something that they really wanted us to take away. So here's all of us with all of the friends that we made there. Sorry, the pictures are a little blurry. Here's Dr. Smedra with some friends that he made as well. These professors came to, to um, GSW in the past couple of years. So some of you may know those ladies. Yeah. And then um, the calligraphy that y'all saw the video of earlier, um, this is the man who was doing the calligraphy in that video. And he actually made a few of us our own little sheets of calligraphy. So here are some other, there's Courtney, one of her friends that we were paired with. Again, it's, we got to go with them everywhere. And so it was really nice being able to connect with somebody who had similar interests as us. And here's the um, teacher who was teaching us calligraphy. And as Raleigh was talking about earlier, there's the different um, types of writing styles and these were examples of it. All of these characters are the same characters, but it's different. It's kind of like how we have print and cursive. This is a version of that. So you have more traditional to like more cursive style writing, but it's still, it has the same meaning and it's the same characters. And there's the professor, the teacher again. And so while we were um, touring with the students, they took us to their library. And so picture our library here, and here's their library. They have this little sitting area, and then they have a pond in their library right there. You can see the fish in the pond. <coughs> and then they also had an art exhibit at this school as well. Um, and here it was just, there were a whole lot of different things just displayed in their library, kind of like what we have here. It's very similar. And so that was our visit to Changshu. Catherine Shira, and uh, I'm a senior here um, in business for human resource management. Uh, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit today about the actual city of Shanghai. Um, the translation for, for Shanghai is City on the Sea, 
Uh, it started out as a small village and it stayed that way until 1842 at the end of the first Opium Wars. Um, and then the British, the French, and the Americans started to come in and colonize, um, which you can still see the influence in Shanghai today of that. Uh, this river here in the middle is the Huangpu River, which separates Shanghai into the Bund on the west bank, which is over there to your left, um, and the Pudong on the east bank, which is the actual city itself. Okay, this side um, is the Bund side, and you can still see the Western influence um, in the architecture. It has 26 different architectural styles, uh, ranging from Gothic, Baroque, Romanesque, Renaissance, and several others. Um, this wall right here, that's known as the Lover's Wall. Um, it's where people can walk and take strolls and get a beautiful view of the scenery across the river in the Pudong area. Now this is the Pudong area. Um, just a little bit about a few of the buildings. This building right here, the really, really tall one, that is the Shanghai Tower. Um, it stands 2,073 feet high, and it's the second tallest building in the world, um, second only to the Burj Khalifa, which is in Dubai. Um, the building over there I thought was really cool with the two globes. That is the Shanghai International Convention Center. It was built in 1999 for the Fortune Global Forum. And it was built to symbolize China's next growth phase into a global economy and a global market. Okay, one of the cool things that we did while we were there was we took a nighttime boat ride down um, the Hangpu River. Uh, so you got to see all the lights and everything, which this is the Pudong side up top, and then this would be the Bun side. And then over there to your left, that's the Oriental Pearl, which the, the smaller sphere that's higher up, that is actually an observation deck that we went on. Okay, and this is from that observation deck. Uh, in the picture to your left, you can kind of see the city and you can see how bad the pollution is there. Um, it's a major problem as Shanghai is a city of approximately 24 million people. Um, compared to some American cities, New York only has 8.5 and LA only has 10 million people. So it's, it's definitely overpopulated. Um, maybe not over, but it's a lot of people. Uh, this right here, this is a glass bottom observation deck uh, where you can walk out and stand and see everything beneath your feet. And like those little teeny tiny dots up there are cars. So um, the total height of the tower is 1,553 feet, but this was at 850 uh, feet. Okay, this is the Old City God's Temple, which is in the middle of Shanghai City. Um, it was built during the Ming Dynasty, which was from 1368 to 1644. Um, and it was built to protect the people and includes nine palaces. Um, now it serves more as a tourist destination where you can go shopping, you can get authentic Chinese food, um, see some of their culture. And I, for me anyways, this is one of my favorite places because the shopping was really, really great. And it was just an overall fun experience because everybody, all, all of the vendors were haggling with you and you could talk them down. Um, and then at the end of the day, everybody would get back together and we'd have similar products and be like, oh, how much did you spend, and how much did you spend? So it was really cool to see who could talk somebody down the most. Um, so that was a lot of fun. But uh, you can see all of the, the architectural styles from the Ming Dynasty in a bunch of the pictures. Um, and then one other thing that I want to talk about that we did in Shanghai, uh, we went to a Chinese tea house, um, which is a pretty popular thing there. Um, so we could experience the Chinese tea culture. The tea ceremony, it's not really, it's more of an artistic performance than an actual ceremony. And there's uh, certain rituals that they have to follow and they have to do everything in a specific way. Um, it em emphasizes the tea's taste and smell in a relaxed atmosphere. <laughs> um, in China, they say that the tea ceremony spirit is described as peace, tranquility, enjoyment, and truth. And they hold tea ceremonies uh, for things like if someone comes and you want to show them a sign of respect, your visitors, um, family gatherings, even business meetings. While we were at this tea house, there were several people that were having business meetings and they were sitting around the table with their laptops and um, in their business suits and but having, having some tea. And these are just a couple of the different things that they have. Like it's, it's, everything's very meticulous in the way that it's set up and the way that it's done. And it was really cool. Um, overall, it was a really, really great experience, and I encourage anyone and everyone that can to go study abroad anywhere. It doesn't have to be China, anywhere that you can go. 
Um, so thank you. Okay, thanks. Just checking. All right, Mike Tracy. I really don't know how I got the topic that I got. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, they said I volunteered for it. I really didn't. I think they just chose my area of expertise. <laughs> <laughs> it includes traffic and toilets, both of which are something you have to overcome in Shanghai. And any other, I mean, it's really, I know. Okay, there we go. That's our toilet. That's the Western style toilet you guys used to, right? Yeah, I know. Well, I got this type of toilet. I don't know. Anyway, that's what we're used to. It's flush toilet. It's an old design. I looked it up. I mean, we actually had it in Britain, dating from the 31st century. Flush toilets were used through Roman Empire. Right? They did it through plumbing. This is not what you're used to. <laughs> so when you go there, this is an Asian squat toilet. It's also called a Turkish toilet. It's called several other things. Like I said, I don't know why I got this topic. It looks difficult, doesn't it? <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> right. Squat toilet. It's also known, okay, we did all of that. Several types of squat toilets, but they all consist of an opening in the floor, the only exception is a pedestal squat, which makes you look like Spider-Man in the, it's really interesting. Uh, all inspiring. Uh, but it's also possible to squat over a sitting toilet, but it requires a lot of extra care. So it depends on what you're used to, I guess. But they're mainly found in Asia, Middle East, Europe, South Af America, and Africa. Sorry? Hey, you guys have a question about a toilet <laughs> Let it roll. All right, here we go. This is how we do it. All right, proper squat is with your heels resting on the ground. Amazingly, well, I told you, Sam. Amazingly, most Westerners cannot do this. You gotta give it a shot. You'll figure. I mean, it's that's tough going. There's some tips. Watch your feet. These toilets are mostly designed to avoid physical contact. Keep your pants off the ground. All right, bring your own paper. There's a lot of places over there didn't have a sign of it. So if you were in a bad way, you are just in a bad way. <laughs> Consider bringing your own soap. We ran into several of them that didn't have any soap in it. Had water, no towel. Well, like that's pretty much uh you know, I got a picture over here in case you guys like no, no, yes kind of thing. They got a lot more graphic on the net, but I didn't go there. This is a great link. I'm not going to play the video or anything like that. Oh, you no. watched it, didn't you? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get out of that one. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I'm still going to traffic. Okay, I got traffic. Uh, swim me back up. How do I do that? Thank you, ma'am. Okay, Shanghai, again, just like Catherine said, it's like 23 million people. A lot of dang people, man. They're like, no excuse me, no nothing. Just get out of the way. In contrast, New York's one of our largest cities in the country. It's eight and a half million. So the effect on traffic is like unbelievable. You guys had to be there. That's like the traffic again in Shanghai. It's like six lane. And, and what's really great is, uh, well, I, I mean, I got other points. I thought that was a nice picture. I'm putting it on there. Scooters. Everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. You don't go anywhere and there's not a scooter. And they come out in the middle of the night on you. I mean, electric scooters, just <laughs> no lights or nothing. And you're in a, and you look up, here comes a scooter, man. Like life and death. <laughs> okay. Off of that. Things to remember about traffic in Shanghai. Bigger is the next right of way. <laughs> That's it, buddy. They're big, get out of their way. Traffic lights are mostly for decoration. <laughs> the first time we got in a first time we got in the tour bus, it was like boom, boom, first red lights and then stop at the third. Right? <laughs> I, I didn't follow the logic. Uh, no speed limit. None. 
you get in there, they're barreling down the six lane. And they do have speed humps about the height of that desk, though. <laughs> if you're sitting in the back seat, you will absolutely do a little hover and then come back down. Nick was the only one I saw that could sleep through it. Robbie and I woke up several times. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was a bum. Scooters are the water bugs of the road, and they only have general lane guide, guidelines, so they're everywhere. I mean, just scooters in and out, slip. And at night, they just turn into silent ninjas that appear out of the darkness and disappear just as quick. They don't, they roll no headlights, man. Middle of the night, they go, no, no light on. It's, in, it's tough. They're safe and empty. Ma'am? They're safe and they're empty, right? The I guess. <laughs> I don't know. They get a ticket here for it. <laughs> Intentionally running a scooter off the road is not a punishable offense. <laughs> they literally had them guys up against trees when we were going through there. It was, I saw. Commander Cody just literally once, just like this on the side there. I think they make them mad. There is always another car coming. Isn't there, Sam? <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Guys, there's always another one coming. Don't think for a minute there's not. It's perfectly okay to park your semi in the middle of a six lane highway if there's a flea market on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> we literally, man, them guys were out there shopping and we were dodging. They just get out in the middle of it. It was interesting. Um, horns are necessary communication devices not to be ignored. I can't think of the trip we made that the guy wasn't laying on the horn about half the time. And you must flash your headlights when you're behind another car. I mean, that was every time we rode, I promise. It was interesting traffic. Fascinating. Drivers in Shanghai played the game by the inch and have to be some of the better drivers in the world. I think Ronnie and I talked about that. Them guys don't miss each other like there. <laughs> We're all sitting in the back. I'm going, wee, it's just like a roller coaster ride. <laughs> Driving in Shanghai is not for the faint of heart, buddy. If you get across the road and get stuck in the middle of a turn lane with a friend, by the way, <laughs> and traffic screaming past you on both sides, the local will start taking pictures of you. What are they saying? <laughs> they don't. They don't care, buddy. They are on the bus. <laughs> they were waiting for the big, big flat. <laughs> and, and, anyway, I think that's, oh, okay. Public transportation is really the way to go. Uh, it's intelligently situated and frequently used. If you're getting off on the subway and everybody starts running, what do you do? Run. Dang right. We took off with them, buddy. That was, that was bizarre. We were riding on the side, right? And all of a sudden, one stop, everybody just poured out of there. It was wide open, man. So. Everybody goes, what are we doing? So run. I mean, what? <laughs> it's, I mean, it's either something big you don't want to be standing there waiting on or somebody, you know, somebody's going somewhere you want to go real bad. And uh, EMFH is the operating standard for individual transportation. It's like every man for itself, bro. <laughs> you're out there and you're on your own. It was a great experience. I, I would really suggest if you have the opportunity to leave the country at any point and just to understand how other cultures think about the same things we think about and what they do and when they do it, I would suggest you go do it. It was fascinating. And I really enjoyed the crowd I was with. Thank you. Great. Could y'all all come down on the stage? So now is your time. Can every can the students come on down? I want y'all to, uh, anybody, I know we, we pour a lot of information out, but Come on down, and if y'all would like to ask any particular questions from any of the different segments, please feel free, and I'm going to give the, the microphone to the students. Oh, uh, can I just Before we take questions, it totally slipped my mind. I forgot to tell you guys that I really did enjoy the trip, even though I'm not a traveler, and so it's really been bothering me. I did enjoy it, and I will be traveling out of the country again soon. All right, so questions. Um, yes, girl. No. <laughs> Not at all. Just kidding. So most of the toilets weren't, except at the hotel that we stayed at, they did have Western style toilets. Other than that, if you were lucky enough to find the handicap bathroom, they had Western style. Other than that, yeah. You talking about the Japanese girl. They're real high tech. Oh, yeah. Okay. You look it up later. Next question. Comment. <laughs> What? Courtney got food. She did eat everything. It's definitely not anything like the Chinese food that we got here. Like, they 
and you not eat soy sauce, it took me forever to find soy sauce. <laughs> that when we got back, we found out we ate some very not pleasing things that we had no idea that we actually ate. So it's just very different. But Riley really enjoyed it. He tried a lot of different things. So if you want to know, can you want to tell about the All right, I tried a duck head. That's what he bring in the eyes. <laughs> Duck tongue, pig feet, pig ear, squid, um, fried squid. Is there anything else we're missing? Yeah. Oh, oh, little, little dessert things. Egg, 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 The things we got. Um, no, egg, 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 Hot chocolate with pudding in it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I'll be service like you know they have like even type and um, I'll improve the program. <laughs> <laughs> So we have like, you know, different food, like other than all those exotic food that like uh, they just talked about and for sure it's very different. We don't always put soy sauce in it, you know. And we don't always have sweet and sour, so don't like, you know, just all of that. Um, but we have like every kind and also like when you're in Shanghai, we went to the restaurants around um, the campus. They have different restaurants that's like, you know, from different provinces. So, you know, if you think about in America, like you would have like the southern food, the one like, you know, from Wisconsin, you know, kind of like different, different states and all. But um, it's very interesting because like, they eat a lot of like different snacks. So after the main meal, a lot of time they might walk out of campus, get like some dessert, maybe like uh, sweet drinks, um, or what do you guys say? If, if it's like noodles, you know, like, um, yeah. Yeah, we usually like you know get uh, we don't get drinks in the meal. So like um, when you go there, they might you have to order your own drinks. Um, I want to kind of like clarify something. Uh, for example, like uh, I'm gonna will mention the eleven o'clock. But some of you are like, what? Um, the reason for that is because um, they share rooms with three people. So in order not to um, cause conflicts between the roommates. So the university wants to come like, okay, well, you do everything that you can do in your room by 11. So if you want to study, like cram for exams, do your paper, so you can go to other rooms, uh, different classrooms in um, the uh, main buildings. So a library, so you can do that. Um, also, they try to want to give you like a healthier lifestyle, you know, less gaming, you know, at night. So something like that. <laughs> More questions. Yes, ma'am. What did you guys do with money? What did we do with it or how did we do it? How did you do it? Uh, you take the way through. Are you asking like how do we like pay for stuff over there? Oh, um, it's uh just talk to your bank and you just go to the ATM and they'll have it like, you know, if you're of uh, different language, you speak English and it just tells you how how much money um you can get out but over over there, everything is like cheaper in, Amer in American money. Like, 16 of our dollars is 100 if you want. Is it 6 to 1? 6 to 1. Oh, 6 to 1. I just knew 16 of American dollars was 100 dollars in China. So, <laughs> so everything just goes down from there. So, um, the honest stuff was actually like really cheap over there compared to over here. So, I really enjoyed that though. <laughs> oh, also one thing I forgot to mention in my presentation, they don't bow over there. That's like not a greeting at all. They don't like that. Um, they, they shake hands and they hug just like everything like we do, but there's no bow. Question. Oh, did you have a Okay, now we'll go. Well, in American dollars, yeah, compared to us, it's cheap, but over there, it, it can it's a little, it's a uh, expensive in the in, um, in you want or R and B. But they don't, they don't make as much. Right. Oh, the spirits and farmer, they don't make as much as we do either. So it's all. Yeah. Um, that yeah. So <laughs> for a uh, living cost, like food is cheap, and then you know um, transportation, public transportation is really cheap. But if you want to get a car and also like gasoline, those are expensive because they're trying to you know 
have people, cut down like people having cars and use the public transportation. Living costs, um, it depends on where you are. If you are in like, you know, Shanghai, the, in the urban area, then this, you know, is way more expensive. Um, and that's pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was the fast food different over there? Like in the actual fast food restaurants, or did they not really serve? Huge, yeah. Huge, yeah. Huge, yeah. Huge, yeah. Well, I could just try pineapple pie at McDonald's. It was so delicious. They don't have that here. They don't have that apple pie. So that was very mm -hmm. cool. The chicken nuggets taste different. Yeah. Yeah, that was actually what I was going to talk about. Uh, yeah. There's one restaurant we went to, it was really interesting. Uh, you know how here we have the, these kind of cheaper Chinese restaurants. Uh, they have the same thing over there for American restaurants. Um, and it really made me question what we have written on the walls of Chinese restaurants. Because one thing that was um, written that really caught my eye is on the chicken packet is, um, come on big chunks of vitality. Um, that really caught my attention, and and there was I loved my taste easily, and everything was really really breezy too. But. Eighteen. Um, they did play a lot of basketball. That would probably be the next sport after ping pong. But they really didn't have that like fun middle or anything. They were just practice moves that they saw in the play <laughs> Um We did see a grand opening of, uh, of a district area with y'all remember? Yeah, at the Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, it, it, it's pretty impressive. We never saw them in action, but there was a lot of them, and they looked very professional. The only ones that carry guns are the ones that carry guns. The only ones that carry guns are the ones at the banks. That's what we're all saying. Mm -hmm. They don't enforce travel laws. No, no, no. no. Another question? Mm -hmm. There's another question. Brandon, how are the English classes like there? Kind of like the Chinese classes here. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are interested in picking Chinese, you know, like, yeah, I like it for Chinese. Yeah, um, you know, you can kind of like find me directory Alan Young, find like Y E U N G or like go to English Building 217 to talk to me or if you're interested in travel. Good. Our Chinese class language classes were great. We had really amazing teachers. It was fantastic teachers. They were teaching mainly international students, some of whom were American. Um, but it was real intense. We had some intense language. There's no way you can get it in two weeks. Um, but I want to I want to wrap up because I know we're going to stay on time. But I want to thank you all for coming. And this is a Windows to the World event, so if you'd like to get credit for that, Kimyata is right over here with the swipe. If you've got your GSWID, you can get um, Windows to the World credit. And if you have any other questions, I'm sure that our students uh, will hang out for a little while. If you'd like to come ask something about toilets that you didn't get to ask. <laughs> Also, if you're interested in uh, study abroad, we have a Bulgaria program. Yes. Yes. Consider Bulgaria. We have a fantastic program that until the end of March you can you can apply to go on this for four weeks in the summer. It's a fabulous opportunity. So please come talk to us if you're interested in that. Thanks.